We just got our first look at Willem Dafoe in the upcoming Nosferatu coming in 2024. Let's talk a little bit about it. Welcome, welcome to the second page. My name is Jerry, and today we're talking a little bit about Nosferatu coming from director Robert Eggers in 2024 on Christmas Day, the same day that Jordan Peele's new movie comes out. How exciting is that? I'm excited for it. Well, we got a little bit of an update today, Nosferatu 2024. First image of Willem Dafoe as a mad vampire hunter in Robert Eggers' remake. So there it is. Look at him cracking up. God, what a picture. That is one of the most metal images I have ever seen in my life. I love this so much. Much. Willem Dafoe losing his mind playing a crazy vampire killer as he's described here is pretty awesome. I do want to clarify something. Some people might be looking at this and they're like, oh, he's playing Van Helsing. Duh. That's like what this is. You would be wrong. So if you don't know, the original Nosferatu is based on Bram Stoker's Dracula, but it's not the same story. It's like a German take on the same novel. It's written by different people. The events of the film are like slightly different. It's pretty much the same story with a few things different. Obviously, like it's Count Orlok versus... Count Dracula. The way that Dracula is portrayed in the film is very different too. He's much more of like just a full on monster versus like being able to slip into society and be like, oh yes, I'm a regular looking human being who's like kind of attractive. Oh no, 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 no. This isn't the first time um, that this would happen with Dracula too. In 1901, there was an Icelandic translation of the original English text, but what they ended up doing was basing it off of like an earlier draft of the original novel. So like the story is completely different in, in Icelandic. They've then retranslated translated it. Is that a word? I don't think so. They translated it again from Icelandic to English and you can read that. That's online. Um, and check it out. It's also yet again a different way to look at that story. There, there's many different incarnations of this story, which I think is great. Nosferatu is probably just one of the most popular ones. But we're getting another remake of it. There was a 70s remake that I also recommend. Also very cool. Uh, very similar to the, the, the 1920s movie, but not the same. Just like how I'm assuming this one's going to be. A, a very different film as well. What, and something I learned from this bloody disgusting article that I did not know is that Willem Dafoe played Max Shrek who played Count Orlok Nosferatu in the original film. He, he actually played him in like a, a fictional version in the 2000 movie uh, Shadow of the Vampire, which is a fictionalized account of the making of Nosferatu. I've never seen it before, but I imagine it deals with some of the things I was just telling you about basically making a movie that's based off of a property that you don't own and taking it down your own your own direction. What's really crazy about the film is that when the original came out in 1922, they got sued over it, of course, because it's basically the same movie, but the, the names are just changed. Not different enough. And most of the copies were destroyed. Obviously, some of them survived. You're still able to watch the movie nowadays, which is great because I think it's a great new take on this story. It just wasn't done legally. <laughs> I, I love it though. Um, that original movie is a great like silent film watch. If you're someone who doesn't know a whole lot about silent films like myself, uh, this is a great place to start. But we got our first look from Entertainment Weekly. And EW also reveals that Willem Dafoe's character in the film is named Professor Albin Eberhardt von Franz. Now, what's interesting is there is a Van Helsing character in Nosferatu, but not as, he's just not as important to the plot as how he is in the original novel or like the story that you most likely are more familiar with. So this to me is probably like a different take on Van Helsing. Maybe like, I mean, just look at the look. I mean, it's got, it's very similar. Uh, so I, I imagine that this character will be a, a similar incarnation, but maybe just a, a different take, like the same kind of character, but played by a crazy Willem Dafoe. Robert Eggers even describes the character as a crazy vampire hunter. I mean, look at him. It's Van Helsing, but Willem Dafoe is just going fucking nuts playing the character, basically. I'm excited for it. it it's going to be a different take on the character, just like how Nosferatu is a different take on Bram, Bram Stoker's Dracula. I love it. Focus Features will release Nosferatu in theaters for Christmas on December 25th of 2024. Already talked about that. Doing a little Jordan Peele and Robert Eggers double feature that day. It's going to be a weird Christmas next year. Oh, man. I'm excited for it. Willem Dafoe, Bill Skarsgård, Nicholas Holt, Emma Corrin, Lily Rose Depp, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Simon, Simon McBurney, and Ralph Ineson will star in this bad boy. Uh, what a cast. That Can I just say that? Every single person from that cast list is unbelievably talented that I have seen in something else. Usually when I read a cast list, I'm like, oh, cool. Like Willem Dafoe is going to be in this. Great. But like every person here is fantastic. Willem Dafoe in like every movie ever. He's fantastic. Bill Skarsgård, Pennywise the Clown, Nicholas Holt, Renfield. Emma Corinne is someone I don't know off the top of my head. 
Oh, oh, she's going to be in Deadpool 3. No way. Emma Corrin, badass. Nosferatu. Oh, she was in My Policeman. My Policeman is a pretty good movie. I recommend that. Uh, a Harry Styles performance I don't hate. Another really exciting thing about this is that Ralph Innocent and Willem Dafoe will be re-teaming with Robert Eggers. They've worked with him before. Ralph Innocent, The Witch, Willem Dafoe. Wow, two movies now. The Northman and The Lighthouse, which is well, uh, both great watches, by the way. I, I know a lot of people talking about The Lighthouse. I would say like that's probably his most talked about film right next to The Witch, but no one talks about The Northman. Great movie from a couple of years ago. I, I really recommend recommend it. Uh, it's it, fantastic if you haven't seen it. If you're watching this video, you've probably seen it, but but still. Brief description of the film is Robert Eggers' Nosferatu is a gothic tale of obsession between a haunted young woman in 19th century Germany and the ancient Transylvanian vampire who stalks her bringing untold horror with him. I would say the biggest change between Nosferatu and Bram Stoker's Dracula is just the fact that like Nosferatu is more of a monster and less of like this romanticized vampire. I think this is kind of where we get both of these ideas in like modern horror. Like in modern vampire movies, you have your like the Lost Boys, which is much more inspired by like Universal Dracula, where Nosferatu might have inspired something more like 30 Days of Nights, if that makes sense. So if you're kind of wondering like what's the difference, I haven't I haven't seen both movies. It's kind of that. It's like Nosferatu is more like animalistic and like I, I gotta have the blood now. You know, there's no self control. There, there's like that's out the window at this point. Dracula struggles with that a little bit, but he's still able to like make appearances. You, you know what I mean? Like Nosferatu, nah, the dude's ugly as fuck. Like no offense. No, no offense, Nosferatu. He likes to flip light switches on and off. He's just a weirdo. You know, Nosferatu is the weirdo. Dracula's like the cool guy. If this was like a high school scenario, you know, Nosferatu's the nerd who gets bullied by, by Dracula. Eggers uh, directs and writes, which is going to be, that means very good things, very positive things there. We love Robert, a good Robert Eggers script. Usually very hard to understand. It's a rewarding experience though, when, when you get through it. The Witch is a movie that is very hard to understand. You pretty much got to watch this movie with subtitles. But if you get to the end, it's a rewarding experience, man. It, it's, it's a great movie. I, I really enjoyed it. It took me a couple times to get through it. But I liked it. Eggers also serves as a producer alongside Chris Columbus from like Harry Potter. I think he was supposed to do like Gremlins 3, right? Isn't that who this is? Who this is? Same guy. Eleanor Columbus, probably Chris's wife, maybe? I should do some more research on this. I think what's something that's really cool about Nosferatu is that the 1922 version, like I said, isn't a ripoff of Dracula. It's just we're adapting the story in a different way. Which is why I'm really excited to see what they do with this new take. Because that 1979 movie... While it does have some of the staples of that 1922 movie, it's it's different. It still is different. It's it's not the same film. And I'm hoping the same is true here. I am very much so in the camp with remakes that if you're going to remake something, do it your own way. Take it down a different path. Even if that means that it's going to be worse than the original, you still give yourself a reason to exist. Like if this movie is like a, a one for one with the original I'm not going to like it. And there's a part of me that thinks like Robert Eggers might go down that route. Now, listen, I don't know Robert Eggers personally, but from reading interview articles and, and, and all these, all, all this stuff about him and things he said, he just gives me the kind of energy where he's like, I was born in the wrong generation, dude. I should have been born like a hundred years ago. That would have been so much more my, my speed. While I love his movies, I feel like this is a bit of a pretentious take personally. Like everybody in any time period has felt this way at some point. When I was in high school, I was like, God damn, I wish I lived through the seventies. I loved Pink Floyd in high school so much. I still love Pink Floyd to this day. But it's like I had that take a long time ago, and now I'm like, ah, it's kind of cringe, bro. But I worry that he's going to be too faithful to the 1922 movie. I just hope that he's not that faithful to it. I hope he takes his own own unique direction with it. He takes it down a new path. It, we, we see that. Even in this image, though, I mean, look at this uh, shits on fire. Willem Dafoe's laughing. It almost comes off as he's a bit of a side antagonist in this movie. So I do feel like that's not something to worry about, but it's something that you can't avoid talking about when it comes to remakes. You know, no one wants to see a remake. That's a one for one with different people. I don't at least maybe you do, but I have no interest in seeing like a one for one with, uh, with another movie that already exists. I can just watch that movie. Like if I wanted to watch Nosferatu, the 1922 one, I'll watch that. The 1979 movie also has some different flavors to it. We'll try that one out too. I mean, it looks like Willem Dafoe's character is going to be fleshing out this, I wouldn't say underdeveloped character, but just a more, a smaller character in the version of Nosferatu, the vampire hunter, making this a bigger, livelier character here. We can just see that in the photo. So I imagine this is going to be one of the many ways that this film deviates, and I hope that there's more to that as well. I don't want to see the same film. I can't stress that enough. 
But what are your guys' thoughts on Robert Eggers' Nosferatu? Will the man that was born in the wrong generation bring out something pretty badass here? Or maybe the opposite? Are you just like, I don't know about this? Leave me something about it in the comments below and make sure to check out some of the other updates I'm uh, uploading to this page. That'll be pretty cool, my dudes. Thank you again for watching. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.